Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video is going to be I'm going to talk about my October wrap up. So I'm going to talk about the books that I read. Not so, so much about the books that I'm currently reading because well, I don't want to repeat myself and it's getting really boring. So I'm not really going to mention them because you know what they are already. And then I'm going to talk about not movies and series because I didn't really watch um, movies or series. I just watched a documentary, but I'm going to tell you which it was at the end. So the books that I read. Um, in the month of October, I was able to release uh, every Tuesday uh, a review video so for every single book that I'm going to mention there's a review video already uploaded in my channel I'm going to leave a card that's the pop-up that will go that will appear around this here and or down in the description if you want to check it out the box description the link will be there uh, so I really enjoyed this month of course I start reading these books early so um, surrounding August or something because for me I have to do that to be on schedule so uh, <laughs> so I'm going to mention it I'm, I'm not going to talk about them or each one of them so much because I have a video all about each each one of them so I don't want to repeat myself but okay so the first one was Carrie by Stephen King this was my first endeavor in the fiction of Stephen King and as I explained it I want to pick up the books of Stephen King by publishing order, so by chronological order in terms of publishing. Um, so I started with Carrie. And I have to say that the beginning for me was a bit slow, a bit dragged. I, I wasn't really getting you know, I, I was already knowledge about the general point of the plot because I watched a, a movie. I, I mentioned which one, from which year I shall say in the video. So go check it out. Um, so, you know, I have knowledge about the story already. But then more to the end of it. I was really surprised and it made me glued to the story because it comes a point where it gets really exciting because things start to happen and for what I gathered that is a frequent, a frequent thing that happens in Stephen King's books so if all of his books is going to be like this so the beginning will be a bit slow a bit you don't know to which way is going for and then at the end is really gripping so I'm not complaining but you know that's a perspective that you should know and perhaps you can ponder if you like it or you don't so there we go then I read interview with the vampire by Anne Rice um, again, I have already seen the movie from 92, I think, with Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, and how is she called? Now I don't remember, but, but I mentioned her in my video, so there you go. Uh, and I love the movie and I love vampire stories. Um, I find them... You know, it's a really, it's a character 
or a monster, should we say, them that I'm fond of. <laughs> so, you know, I like it. Okay, I like it, just that. And so I was intrigued to, to read the book when I found out it has, it was based on a book I didn't know for many years. Uh, and yeah, it came a day that I bought this book. I think it was this year. Yeah, right. So I planned this book for the October month and I bought it a few months ago. It, it was at the beginning of the year. I, I got a promotion in my usual um, bookshop and I bought it. So, uh, and so this is about an interview as the title explains with a boy, a mortal boy, and a vampire, Louis. So they are in San Francisco, in some place, some apartment perhaps, we don't really know. And this boy is um, taping the interview because he, at the beginning, he doesn't believe that Louis is a vampire. He thinks that this time some crazy person that believes he is a vampire, you know? And so the point of the interview is for Louis to tell him his life story. So he begins uh, to tell from, uh, not really from his childhood, that, that's not really where Louis begins. He begins to the, in the point where He's already uh, the man of the family because he dad passed away and he is responsible for lands and for his family in the suburbs, we shall say, of New Orleans. He has lands in the surroundings and um, he has a mother, a sister and his younger brother. And something happens with his younger brother and he's really he loves his brother of course um, and something happens to him and that leads louis to want wanting death for himself and there is where lestat comes in and lestat is a vampire and you have to read it to find out what I'm talking about. So, there you go. Then I read Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. So this is a thriller, but not so much a thriller about who killed it or, or him or her. Who killed is more about will the detective catch the guy? Because in here, so this is the first installment for the series of, I don't know if it's called Hannibal Lecter, but this is the famous series where the famous character Hannibal Le Lecter is uh, in. And this is the first book of the series. And for many years, I thought it was The Silence of the Lambs, but it's not, it's Red Dragon. And in this one, I was assuming that the killer would be Hannibal Lecter, but again, it isn't. Hannibal Lecter in this book is imprisoned in a high security hospital. And Hannibal Lecter is a um, very intelligent, intelligent psychiatrist. So, and here we, ha we are presented to Graham, that is a FBI detective that is retired and Graham caught Hannibal Lecter. So he was the detective that figured out, um, but that is not really explained. We, that information is given, you know, because the serial killer that we are accompanying in this book is not Lecter. It's another figure, the Tooth Fairy. So Graham is retired, as I said, but he is still young, but um, he was wounded by Lecter and he, and, you know, he has some trauma and some PC, PTSD, I think, 
that's how you say it um, and you know he didn't want their, that life for him anymore and so he went to a hospital to recover physically and mentally and emotionally uh, and he retired from FBI and right now we have how is he called Crawford we have Crawford that was an agent that worked with Graham and likes him very much personally and professionally and he's trying to convince Graham to come back just for one case that they are trying to cut the tooth fairy and so he, he, he gets Graham in the case and it comes a point where Graham studies the, the file and studies the profile of this killer and so on and so forth but comes a point where Graham wants to see Lecter to have his opinion on the profiling of the tooth fairy and he goes to the hospital where Lecter is and talks to him and, all, uh, and you know some things happen because of that visit um, Lecter and the Tooth Fairy will be in contact, so not so good things will happen. Then we will have the perspective of the Tooth Fairy. We will learn about his childhood. We will learn about where he works, what he does for a living, um, how his social life is at the moment, you know, what particularities are that made him who he is, you know, his life story. So, and then we also will follow a romantic, a romantic endeavor in Tooth Fairy's life. Uh, I don't want to say too much because this is a thriller and the point, if you don't know, you probably already uh, know about Hannibal Lecter, of course. He's such a famous character. He has a series, a more or less recent series in the streaming. Um, so, you know, for one way or another, he probably had already heard about this character. But for me, I had seen the movie Red Dragon. He was 2000 and something. So, many years after the Silence of the Lambs, the famous movie of Silence of the Lambs. And I remember the movie, but there's something in the end that happened that I wasn't really expecting. And I was, you know, very thrilled <laughs> and uh, on the edge of my seat. So this is great. And as I've said, this is not who is who, this is more will he be caught so be aware of that and if you don't know nothing about the original series and the original font that's this book series i think you will love it and i will continue the series because i love the concept of hannibal lecter so i'm thrilled to continue so there we go then i read uzumaki by junji ito so this is a manga and I'm not going to show you here um, pages of this manga because I showed you in my video so go there to see if you like it, if you find it spooky or too spooky for you or not. So there you will have more information about the plot of this book, some some pages that I will show to you so you have an idea what to expect from this manga because sometimes visuals can be a bit too much for some people so there I'll, I, I will show you for you to have you know a, um, a visual of what to expect so this book is about so Uzumaki is the Japanese word for spiral and this book is all about that spirals so we have a main character that is kitty right yeah kitty goshima she's a girl from uh, kuruzo shu 
that's the city where she or the town where she lives in and she has a friend boyfriend we don't really get what where they are at called sushi or switchy no switchy switchy <laughs> i never say the word right his name right so and she will be the lead of the story um, and Suichi will have a um, really important role as well but the main character will be Kiri. The first lead of something is going on kind of situation it's caught by Suichi because he doesn't go to high school in his town Kurozo he goes outside of the town because he says that Corozo it's weird so something in the air something about the siren that always um, bells something about the what so everything ab about the town where they live is strange to Suchi or is not quite right and he tells this to uh, Kitty, but she, she doesn't understand where he's coming from and he goes to ask her to flee the town together and get out of there. But, you know, she doesn't really want to do that because she feels okay there, she feels comfortable. Uh, but, you know, the first story is about um, strange things happening with Suichi father. Something about spirals and an obsession that Suichi father has of the pattern of spiral, of a spiral. And he goes to collect everything, random objects, random fabrics, random pottery that has the spiral pattern. And he he will be so obsessed by this that he stops working and he stops paying attention to his family so the wife and the son and he, one day the wife collects all his objects and take them to the trash and when the father of Suchi, Suichi gets home and he sees that the room is empty he goes in a frenzy and he almost beats his wife. And after that, well, an even more strange thing will happen. And that is just the first story. And after that, a, a, a number of episodes will occur uh, that are bizarre, horrific, um, of and you know that will be surrounding spirals and the strange thing is and that's something that i mentioned in my review video is that no one at least not until until the end of the book of the manga no one thinks to get out of there so the kids are going to school people are going to work and these things will continue to happen and no one is like yeah maybe this is haunted or something maybe something is not right here maybe we should get out we should leave so none of that will happen that will only happen when it's too late and you know this was fascinating you have to pick up this book get a promotion whatever figure it out and buy this manga you have to read it um it's so <laughs> you will laugh although bad and um fatal things will happen in this manga um you will laugh you will have moments i don't believe this is happening what are don't what do you don't see and you will be they are cheering for the characters, cheering for something to save them or someone and you know it's 
in thrilling and or thrilling or thrilling or whatever you name it um <laughs> you will be glued so i read this in two afternoons it's not going to take so long for you either so please please get this book get this manga and read it uh, the the visuals and the graphics and the design no the the drawings are very beautiful they are very very captivating i i think they are beautiful although this is horror but you know you see beautiful or you see beauty in everything right or you can say this is a well-drawn draw so that's the case in here so i think you will be very satisfied with the visuals and yeah and he ha this has a lot of surprises at the end so you won't be bored you will be dropping your your mouth at the end so this will make you think that you know how it's going to end but you don't really know how it's going to end so yeah okay and the last one was mary's monster by lita judge so this is a graphic novel about the life of mary shelley the writer of frankenstein so throughout the month of october i read frankenstein but i read in a portuguese edition that i had bought maybe last year or two years ago and it was an edition from a newspaper so it was that kind of uh, books that if you buy the paper you get a book or if you or if you give to one to two years more you get a book i think that was the case although i bought this book in second hand um frankenstein i mean and so then i i, I was talking to a friend um that i i knew here on here no I knew her on Instagram and he was talk to me he was talking to me about the two uh, editions that exist uh, the first edition and then in the, of uh, 1818 and the edition of 1831 it was the augmented edition by Mary Shelley and so I I in the book or uh, in my Portuguese edition if I didn't have the information of which it was so you know uh, and I was really interested in the 1931 edition not the edition of that year you know what I mean the edition that came out in that year so the added edition and I had to do some research it was a bit hard for me to so the information in the website really being explicit about if it was the 1818 edition or if it was the 1831 edition but i explain all that in my video please go check it out if you are interested as well uh, i mentioned a publisher a specific publisher in there so go check it out and so i Although I have read the book and my intention was to bring Frankenstein and Mary's Monster, so these two books in my review video, I wanted to read, first of all, the 31, the 1931 edition, and then I figure out that I want to read it in the original, so in English. So then it was at the end of October and I didn't have the time to order and the book to arrive in my place and to read and to do the video you know so I figured well I have Mary's monster already the two the last day of the month of October um, was 30 the 31 of October so a Tuesday <laughs> it was in a Tuesday where I post and it was the 31st of October so Halloween and I made a, um, a promise to myself <laughs> should I say in that way I don't know 
um, that in the 31st of October, even if it wasn't on a Tuesday or whatever day that I post, um, I would post a video, a special video, of a non-fiction book, book related to the horror genre. So my uh, book of this year will be this one. It's, although it's a graphic novel, it's not really um, a traditional non-fiction per se, but this is a, no a novel, a graphic novel biography. So I'm contemplating this with a non-fiction. So if you don't agree, okay, I that's okay. But you know, this is my channel, so I make the rules. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so I I thought, well, I have a book to talk about, so why not to talk about this one? So that's what I did. And so I love this book. Again, I have a B-roll in that video where I show the draws and um, the visuals of this book in itself. is really beautiful. It's really... Um, uh, how do you say it? He's really... The vibe is really dark. Um, you get really in the mood that this book is trying to bring. So I think if you are in that type of... If you like that type of stuff, I think you will enjoy this book really much, very much. And this has a different approach to um, a biography. Although, as I said, this is a graphic novel, but the text is in verse. So it gets the story really dynamic, really easy to read because you don't, you won't be passing through pages and pages of phrases and paragraphs and words and, you know. So it will be really um, light to not, I'm not, I'm not talking about the drawings. The drawings are a bit dark, but I'm talking about in terms of the reading experience. So it will be light, it will be fluid, uh, dynamic, a fun, so you will enjoy the reading experience of this book. And, you know, Mary's life is very fascinating. She, for you to have an idea, and I'm sure you know this already, she, pl she published Frankenstein when she was 19. And with this book, I was able to know what happened before the publishing of Frankenstein. And she has lived a whole life before she gets to write Frankenstein and publishing it. So it's amazing what this, this woman uh, go through in her teenage years. You know, if I think about what I was doing in my teenage years, I'm sure, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it wasn't that. She had passed to, through so much in her relationship with Shelley that it was her par partner, um, you know, she had to go through his down times that it, it came out a lot. He was a, a, re a very nostalgic person and perhaps with some mental issues. So, you know, she has to figure her out and figure him out. So it was a whole thing that happened in her life. And then to have the inspiration and the creativity to write as is known to be perhaps the first science fiction book of whole time. Uh, so yeah, it was fascinating. I talk a bit more in my video if you are interested and you can see the interior pages of this book and I explain more, more details there, so if you are interested, go and watch that video. So, as I said, uh, I'm not going to, to talk about the books that I'm reading, because you know which what they are. 
So, the documentary that I talked to you about, that I watched, is a three, a three episode documentary. And no, it's not about anything horror, anything death or, or anything like that, because I wasn't really in the mood for that. Although I know it was the horror month and I should bring to you suggest suggestions about the horror month, but that didn't happen. So the only thing that I watched throughout October was Arnold. And this is the documentary of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And as you can imagine, I love this actor. I, th I found him <laughs> so... Again, as Mary Shelley, I think his life is so fascinating. It's so unlike any other. And he's a, a, an inspiration to drive, in terms of drive for something, in terms of go there and do it. If you are afraid, go ask for help ask for support, but do it. Um, this is his life. So as I said, this is three episodes. And if I'm not mistaken, the first one is actor. So the first, ep no, the first one is uh, bodybuilding or athlete. So one of one of the, these these two, I think is athlete. Athlete. The second episode is actor, and the third episode is American. Fascinating. Of course, I knew some things already about his life because uh, I liked him already, and you can say every, anything about his performance in movies, but I enjoy them. Okay. So, you don't need to, to say anything about, oh, he's not a good actor, or some, mm, me, 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 because I love him. So, you won't be convincing me to not like him. <laughs> I'm kidding, okay? Uh, and yeah, uh, so he talks about his childhood in Austria, his parents, how he, he was educated, his brother, I, about the brother I didn't know, um, how he ca came to be a bodybuilder, so the inspiration for that, who were his idols, very interesting, how he came to be a champion in bo bodybuilding, how he came to America and perform bodybuilding, so Every single step or the main uh, steps in his path, how he became an actor, which were the, the people that gave him a shot and bet on him. Um, and then the last episode, of course, the franchises that he was in. And of course, he talked about the Terminator, of course. Uh, he talked about some films and movies that he did and how they were important for his career and how he became um, the best paid actor or something in Hollywood. I don't know if he became that, but I think he did. So, you know, or blockbuster or something. He was the top something. Um, and then uh, when he, he ran for the, for governor of, of California and then uh, his whole campaign how he so what were the circumstances surrounding the period that he could run how was his campaign what happened during his campaign and then when he won what he did and what were the mismatches of his period in as governor in California. Uh, yeah, so many things about his life and his path and 
uh, of course, about his affair and his unlegitimate son Joseph, and he talks. Of, he appears. He doesn't speak in the documentary, but he appears. And another daughter, the how is she called? It's not Catherine. The other, the mo the younger, the second one. I'm sorry, I th Charlotte. I think appears in the documentary, not really speaking for the cameras, but she appears with her dad, uh, painting a, a heart, a heart canvas, maybe for a special occasion. I don't know. Uh, it was really cute. Uh, yeah, and he, of course, I think um, this was also an opportunity for Schwarzenegger to public, publicly, I don't know how to say this word, Jesus, to publicly uh, an announce his acceptance and his love for Joseph. The no, He didn't say this directly or literally, but I think this was an opportunity for Schwarzenegger to, you know, you are my son, I accept you, I want you to feel loved and to feel recognized and welcome to this world because I am your dad and I love you. So, you know, hmm, this will make me emotional. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that was really endearing and wonderful. And I think this will happen to everyone that are or is in that circumstance. And overall, it, was, it is a really great documentary. If you like, or even if you don't like him, you will get to know him a bit better. Of course, in his words, you can say, oh, that's partial. Of course it is like anything else so but do you know you can take your own conclusions but something that i think is unanimous is that and this is something that he does he says in the documentary he doesn't like the thing that i'm going to say to you being said about him that he's a, a self-made man and i like his perspective on how he explains that he isn't a self-made man because he says that he received the help of so many people and he got a bit further because he knew the, a person or knew someone that could help help him in that point in time for him to grow and fulfill his, his objectives and go a bit further in his career so I think that is true, right? I don't think anyone can get wherever they want to get if they don't receive help of some sort of someone. But I think the way that he put it and the way that he, you know, uh, believes it and uh, admits it is really beautiful. And you will see in this documentary as well, friendships that he cultivated during his life uh, and people that he also helped in return for, you know, in a reciprocal type of way that he helped as well during his life. Um, so overall, it's a beautiful documentary. Uh, it's more or less one hour each episode, 50 minutes to one hour. So it's not so bad um, and you can uh, space it out so you can watch a vi a vi um, yes, an episode per day, an episode per week, so you do how you can. But please go watch it, it's so wonderful and if you know him and you like him, I think you will like him more and if you don't like him, you may have a different perspective or confirm your dislike. I don't know. <laughs> but please go check it out. And yeah, I think I'm going to stay here. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. 
follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a, a book review to do or anything else. And I see you on the next one. Bye!